Looks like a silhouette of Michael Jackson on the level up thing. Yo, what's up guys? I'm Govna and today I'm going to give you my honest thoughts on Forspoken, the long-awaited open-world action fantasy adventure made by Square Enix. Thank you so much to Square Enix for giving me a free copy of the game to try out, and uh, without further ado, let's jump into my thoughts. Chatty bling. Chatty bling! One thing I'm sure you've seen a lot of on social media about this game is the dialogue. A lot of people been hating on it. I think a lot of it's pretty decent. I will say that sometimes Cuff would talk a little bit too frequently for me, but a lot of it's going to come down to your own personal taste and sense of humor, honestly, so I'm not going to focus too much on that. In Forspoken, you play as Frey, a homeless New Yorker who's in and out of trouble with the law. She lives with her cat Homer, and she's just trying to get by, uh, but after a short intro, you're whisked away to Athia, the fantasy land where the bulk of your adventure will take place. His name is Bob? There's- oh, his name is Robian, so she's calling him Bob. My overall opinion on the game is that it's not perfect, uh, but a lot of the negatives were really overblown in reviews that I saw. At its best, Forspoken is a thrilling battle with corrupted foes in a sprawling, varied environment where your magic parkour can keep you out of harm's reach as long as you keep your eyes open. At its worst, the game is bogged down by poor optimization, filler content, and ineffective storytelling. Let's dive into the cons in detail first. The poor optimization issues I'm talking about aren't game-breaking by any means, but you know, you'll finish talking to an NPC and it'll take like 10 seconds for the game to give you control again. And some other examples are there are animations that are just missing, uh, which could be cutting corners, could be related to deadlines, could be related to budgets, who knows, but there's a side quest very early in the game where you're given a tour around Sipal, the main hub city where people live safely. Must we? The lame ass side quest, dude. And Pilos, this uh, very annoying NPC, Come on! gives you the tour. At As part of the tour, you literally have to feed sheep. Are you fucking kidding me? I have to find hungry sheep and feed them? And the game doesn't even animate you feeding the sheep. They show you your character crouching down, and then a little dialogue box pops up that says, sheep fed, or <laughs> something like that. Like, it was not a good side quest. New detours are now available. I don't give a fuck. In a way, Sepal, the main hub area of the city, represents all the negatives that I've just described. Every time you come here, the pace of the game slows down to a crawl, and the filler content and optimization issues just bring themselves right to the forefront. The rest of Athia is a vibrant, varied world that compels you onward, using your magic parkour to traverse the land and make it to the next mutant mini-boss, or point of interest, or story objective. Even if you choose not to engage with the hordes of enemies you might encounter on the way, the environments are just fucking awesome. What a joy to explore those. This is where the game really shines. Athia is an absolutely massive world with no shortage of dungeons, mini bosses, and even some magical kitty cats to find. Now let's get into the story. Spoilers ahead, so if you're worried about that, click away now. We all know the basic premise by now. A New Yorker gets whisked away into a fantasy world and adventure ensues. The game really gets going when Tonta Sila, one of the four powerful women who once ruled over Athia, attacks Sipal and you realize you need to track her down and kill her. Sila's the first major story boss in the game. One of only three major bosses, or at least what I would consider to be like a substantial, you know, story boss, the kind of thing you spend your gameplay looking forward to. These major bosses don't disappoint in terms of how cinematic and epic they feel. Like, they feel like some important fights. But difficulty-wise, they just don't live up to my expectations. I mean, like, a lot of the random mutant mini-bosses you encounter in the open world are tougher than these major story bosses. Finally get to this boss and it's just a pushover, you know? It was a little disappointing. Here's where the spoiler stuff really starts. Once you beat Sila, you unlock Sila's magic. Eventually you move on, you have to fight the next Tanta, Tanta Prav. Uh, who has some, like, water magic you can unlock. But once you beat her, she refers to you as the child of Sinta. Tanta Sinta is who, at this point, we're led to believe is going to be the final boss of the game. Like, holy shit. Frey's the daughter of one of the Tantas, but she was abandoned by her mom in New York. 
that's that's fucking compelling uh and at this point i was all in we're gonna track her down and find out why she abandoned us and get our revenge in an epic boss battle right wrong Rather than go straight for Cinta, your partner Cuff, or Vambrace as he prefers to be called, convinces you to take out Tanta Olas first, but when you arrive she's already dead. I was really looking forward to this next boss fight and to find her already dead kind of took the wind out of the sails, especially when instead of absorbing Olas's powers so that you have access to them, which is what Cuff has done the previous two times that you've defeated Tantas, he takes the power for himself and says that he's leaving you. Cuff was a demon all along. He's responsible for the break and was just using you as a means to an end the whole time. This is the second major twist. I could not believe that Cuff, my companion through this entire adventure, turned out to be the bad guy. That twist was really effective at first, but as I kept playing I realized Tanta Sinta is no longer the villain. Am I not going to resolve that dynamic through a fight or confrontation of some kind? And, you know, I didn't. Susurus, the demon that Cuff turns out to be, is the final boss of the game. You know, that whole conflict that I was building up in my head is just gone and irrelevant now. So maybe that's just my own expectations falling apart in the face of what happens in the game. I think that the more predictable ending might have been the more effective one. Anyway, right after you discover that Cuff is the demon, there's a lengthy section in which you walk through Athia with Tanta Sinta's voice guiding you along, and you interact with these little balls of light. Each ball of light you interact with triggers a flashback. I, most of these flashbacks are shown through basically mannequins of the characters involved. We just see still mannequins of the Tantas standing there, like no, no textures or details on them, just like generic looking blank character models and we hear the audio of what's going on in that flashback sure it's cool to get to see the background of what happened prior to the game but it would have been so much more effective if they made cutscenes there's one or two of them that they did make cutscenes for and those cutscenes were fucking awesome when there's t 10 15 flashbacks and only one or two get cutscenes it's a glaring difference in the end, the story and circumstances of the universe make sense. It makes sense that Cuff was a demon all along. It makes sense why the Tantas were losing their minds. It all makes sense, but I think that if they had prioritized emotion over surprise, I think that it would have ended up being a better story. The game may not be optimized as well as it could be, but there's nothing game-breaking. There's a little bit of filler content here and there, but what open-world game is there without filler content? It's easy to point out the negatives and talk about how they could have been improved, but the reality is that the vast majority of your time in Forspoken will be spent exploring Athia, fighting enemies, doing magic parkour, you know, trying to complete challenges to make your spells even more powerful, learn new spells, find new gear. There's a lot of stuff to do here. It's a huge world, gorgeous world, great music. The combat is addictive as hell. The negatives are definitely overblown in my opinion. At the end of the day, it's a fun-ass game. Even if I don't have that many different things to say about the fun aspects of the game, like the combat and the exploration, like, there's no words I could say that would show you how it feels to do that part. Give it a try. Um, do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments. Hit that subscribe button. Like the video if you enjoyed the review. It really helps out the channel. Uh, follow me on Twitch, Twitter, etc. And I will see you guys next time.